It's the morning after the final of the Eurovision Song Contest 2022 and we're going to talk about the results of that contest and uh, the future of the Eurovision Song Contest, <laughs> the near future. Dramatic. Uh, dramatic? No, I mean uh, where it will be uh, ah, held okay, okay. and expectations. That's, that's what I meant. Well, oh, er yeah, I missed er it. Perhaps, Not because um, uh, they already they, they had their uh, plans of the last year and you could uh, copy that, but there are other nations who uh, may well want to host the Eurovision Song Contest. Stefan Gorkum, Erik Walks, next to me, yeah, let's talk about it. Um, Ukraine won with Steve a gigantic result in the televote. I think we could all say that this is historic. Uh, of course, it's historical television, first of all, because of the whole situation and then having Ukraine w win the Eurovision. But from a Eurovision perspective, it's historical because this is a televote of over 11 points on average per country. I mean, we've never seen anything like this and we, dare I say, never will say anyth see anything like this. It's completely crazy. And it proved that at least in the televote, uh, Eric's thesis that Ukraine will win, but perhaps not for the right reasons, at least in the televote, it shows yeah, that this was the case, right? Yeah, I was counting that uh, for probably everybody who has some heart, want to do something for Ukraine, and the only thing they could do feeling powerless is vote for Ukraine. And seemingly, most people did. Uh, also, I said, like the jury... Uh, result would be like fifth or sixth place and I guess that's almost uh, happened as well. Um, so I can think in expert juries also thought okay if I put Ukraine out of my top 10 I will be judged and uh, yeah. So yeah I'm sad uh, that I'm uh, it's a good song l l let's not say it's a bad song it's a good song but it's just sad that it, it didn't win for being the best song or the best performance so in that case I'm a little bit disappointed. Yeah, it is a good song and it would have done would have well in the competition, but it, would but have it wouldn't 10. have won. It would have been top 10, but it would never have won. Um, the juries... One, one more yeah. thing about that, Dennis, because whether or not that's really true uh, remains to be seen, in my opinion. Because in a way, I've always said that televoters are always right and, and the results are always right. And even though right now I feel a little bit disappointed with the way things have been going, because I, I, I like Eurovision to be a competition completely without politics... You also have to keep in mind that in uh, we see already in a lot of countries that Stefania is now a song that's been streamed often, uh, uh, bought, uh, you know, often downloaded often, uh, and and n right now that's only happening still in in the Baltics, in Moldova, in 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 countries in that area. If that starts to happen in Western Europe as well, I'm saying if then maybe it's uh, maybe it's still influenced of course all of that is still influenced by the situation in Ukraine but if that situation changed our opinion about the song then in a way it has become the best song maybe because of the war but it's still the best song if we, if we're all starting to listen to it and enjoying it then it is the best song and in maybe in a couple of weeks or months we have to accept that this was in fact in a way a deserved winner how do you think the response will be in countries like the United Kingdom and Spain? They did great in, in the jury vote, had, had a way better televote than they've had in, in many years. Uh, but then to lose out to what many will perceive at least as uh, the story that yeah, Ukraine won because of the situation in, in that country. What do you think the reaction will be in well, the UK and Spain? I loved the reaction of Sam Ryder in the green room because he immediately showed uh, his, his happiness and he was, I mean, he was happy the entire night when the when the points started coming in and i think he will feel himself like a winner and he should because he brought the uk back from the double zero to a second place whether the rest of the uk will react in the same way i'm not sure i mean they probably gave a lot of points to ukraine themselves in the televote i haven't s seen exactly the split results per yeah, country with, with 11 in on average almost every nation it has to be it has to be so in that sense the uh, the narrative may become that the uk on on the one hand could have won in if it had been another year but also at the same time that they're happy for ukraine and then a little bit also happy for themselves finishing second. So I, th I think, actually, I think they will be fine. And I think this may be a game-changing result for them. But that's that's what's what we have to see in, in the upcoming weeks and months. Maybe in a couple of years he will take part himself again. Because all of a sudden now I'm thinking of Dima Bilan, mm -hmm. who lost against Lordi in 2006. And even said in interviews uh, uh, later on, one of the reasons he came back two years later was that, yeah, he had this feeling that, yeah, if it wasn't up 
for Lordi in that year. I would have won Eurovich and he, he was second, right, in 2006. And then he returned and won after all. So maybe in uh, uh, 2024 we see Sam Ryder again, right? And why not 23? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> because he... Maybe in the United Kingdom, question mark? Uh, because of the second spot, the BBC... Second might spot, BBC might be, uh, might, uh, the BBC might be a broadcaster that the EBU turns to. When it comes to uh, to hosting this, it wouldn't be such a weird idea, right? I think it's quite logical to think that way, yeah. And I think Sam Ryder will come back because he enjoyed Eurovision. He called himself an ambassador for Eurovision. Uh, he wants to uh, level up Eurovision, how people think about it in the UK. So I think he will come back, maybe not next year, maybe in two years, three years. He will. It's still far away, and we're going to talk about some of the other results as well, um, uh, more in depth. Uh, but first... Yeah, now that Ukraine has won, Stephen, what do you think Eurovision in a year from now? And it's a very difficult question now, but, but what will it look like? Is there even the slightest chance it's held in Ukraine? Will it be another nation? What are your thoughts? Ukrainian delegation has often said that they would love to host it in their own country. I think that's a very long stretch. Even if there's peace in Ukraine in a year from now, let's hope there will be. There's still a long, long process for them to go to rebuild their country. Hosting Eurovision cost money. Of course, there will be, uh, there might be sponsors, or there might be people, you know, uh, trying to trying to help them out, make sure th that the, that that it that it could happen. But I think, uh, g given where we are right now, it's a very long stretch, so it's highly unlikely. You know what a great let's not take away the dream. If they have a dream, let them dream because they need a dream. Oh, they need a dream. You I know what a great gesture would be if, like, some other nation steps up and hosts it, but actually only hosts it. So you still let the presenters be Ukraine. Ukrainian, the, the rest of the team, as much as, as, as possible. Make it a co-creation, co that would be really... At nice. least a co that would be the least, of course. It would be, be weird to hold it after Ukraine won and, and have only, for instance, say, let the UK host it. <laughs> and then you have Graham Norton and, and someone else and, and no Ukrainian presenter. And can, I just, and can I just say one thing about 2017, because We've talked a lot about Rai and, and the things that went wrong in these two weeks and, and we've had a very, very, very long grand final last night which took until I don't know how late in the night. In 2017, fans were critical of, of the Ukraine for having like a boring, I say it between, uh, you know, I say a boring, boring Eurovision uh, final, but I loved the way that the Ukrainians actually bought in you know they sought help from some western countries they had swedish help but they made it a very concise and a very efficient show i would much rather see ukrainian production next year than the r the production uh, that the italians brought up this year i mentioned of course the united kingdom and their amazing result of this year coming uh, uh winning the, the the jury vote coming in second place uh, you know who came coming second in second in the televote, Moldova. yes, I was Moldova. going to talk about that yeah, that's really because nice. we knew it w was going to be uh, 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 an, an entry that would have huge impact in the televote. But mm. the second place finish for Moldova, mm. wow! While it was um, all bottom five in the juries, yeah. and also uh, Serbia got third in the televote, so that's really nice because they both got averagely about six points from each televote jury. So that's really a good result, for both for Moldova and for uh, Spain and Serbia. So, that's huge results. What was their secret? I think Serbia was being authentic, unique, and uh, appealing. Maybe there was there was non-verbal uh, language. There were a lot of symbols in it that people related to. It was, of course, also a, a bit the draw. Um, the only Sir Balkan country in the in the, in the final, so all those other countries who understand the language immediately relate to this. I think for Spain it was um, just being one of the few happy songs and the energetic songs. And Moldova probably just being fun, fun, fun out between all these depressing songs. We also had uh, another surprise with Portugal, I guess, in the top ten. I don't think many people saw that coming as a result, right? No, at least uh, I definitely didn't. Um, we have mentioned in our jury blog that it's a jury-friendly entry, of course, but um, it even uh, finished, like, I think, top five or close to top five uh, in the jury vote, which I think that's way higher than even we expected and than many people expected. Uh, I think that uh, speaks to the idea that juries vote for something that's serious, that's credible, 
and 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 I think this performance gave the the right atmosphere for people to 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 get along with it. And I I, I mean, it is a quality entry, and I do think that they deserve it. I just never saw it coming. We always look back critical at our own writings as well, doing uh, especially during the jury show, eh, which we follow. Uh, well, one thing that Im immediately it still surprises me, yeah, Poland, of course, because we predicted Poland to be yes. among the the top four in the jury votes eh, with 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 Sweden. Uh, they delivered uh, the juries delivered towards them. Uh, the same goes for uh, for Italy uh, and the United Kingdom. Uh, but we also mentioned Poland, and well, their jury vote was nowhere near what we expected. What happened? I'm still not sure on that one. I think that's something that we really have to figure out. Uh, as, as you know, uh, our jury blogs from the last couple of years have all been very well uh, thought through and very well researched. And this is something that needs to be researched because it had all the ingredients to be, even in my opinion, a potential top three, maybe a potential jury winner. So if this happened to Poland, uh, it's something that the, our model did not see coming, and that means that the model needs to be changed because we have to look into this uh, and, 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 see, and see what happened there. Same goes for Spain, which we ranked way too low, right? Yes, but I think I can kind of start to see what happened there. Um, I've always said, and the model has always said, that songs that... Uh, portray women in a certain way and that can be perceived as sexist will be ranked lower by juries. I still believe in a way that that is true. But now, because there is a precedent for this, there was one precedent for Spain doing well in the jury vote, which was Eleni Ferreira for Cyprus doing well in the jury vote. And I think now that we've had two of those and, and Ferreira is no longer the only one who achieved a result like this, I think we need to start to acknowledge that this female soloist upbeat songs that combine singing and dancing at the same time may be a genre in which juries tend to accept more sexualized performances and reward the fact that they're singing and dancing at the same time. So this is something that, again, the model needs to be changed. We were wrong about it this year, but I can already start to form some thoughts on how we should change it. Eric, it's the morning uh, after the uh, the show of last night. You're still looking into all the numbers, all the yeah, details, yeah. looking at stats. It's You're going lovely. to do that, I think, for the rest it's of the week. You found something inter in interesting, right? Uh, uh, the, 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 the we miscalculated on Armenia a little bit as well. Uh, she just didn't stand out, uh, not for the juries, not for the televote. We thought it would be clo close to top 10 or even top 10. Uh, she ended up 20th. And and we thought uh, Germany would be a German uh, jury friendly song, ending up with zero points. Is yes, yes, zero, zero points is not jury friendly <laughs> then. No. Uh, no, and he didn't deserve that. Uh, so that's the thing that we miscalculated maybe. And Germany, apart from Michael Schulte, of course, in in Lisbon, they have a terrible streak at at Eurovision going for them uh, now. How how can they turn the tide? <laughs> That's an interesting question. It's also something that needs to be s sought out for for the long term. But when it comes to jury results, I mean, last year I thought they had a much more jury-unfriendly entry. Also came very low, of course, Jendrik. I think only one point. Yeah, yeah, and he got zero. Wi he got zero with televoters. Thankfully, I would always say um, uh, Malik did not get uh, the double zero. He got some points from the televoters, but. Um, I think in Germany it's time to start looking at um, you know they've 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 said farewell to sending bigger names in the past they tried it once didn't work out and then they went in a different way and now they they have this underdog vibe uh, going for them at Eurovision where they trying to create the next Lena through looking for an, an a more unknown young uh, underdog kind of artist or the the new Lena or maybe the new Michael Schulte. I think maybe it's time to to change their perception of what a suitable Eurovision artist is. There were some uh, some huge discrepancies uh, in 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 the final. Uh you can see a few like uh, the, the very jury friendly songs like Australia, Azerbaijan, and Switzerland. They got around hundred points points uh, average, and they did receive zero, two, and three points in the televote. So maybe going with it with a well song ballad is not the idea if you want to win. Uh, unless uh, you get the televote uh, activated. That, that remains the big secret at Eurovision, to, to have an entry that uh, strikes well with both the jury and, and the televote. Uh. Well, the highest placed ballot now is Greece, I think. 
Yeah, depends if you, depends if you count Italy as a ballot or not. No, I wouldn't. There's a rap part in it, so why is it a ballot? It's more a pop song, I think. Yeah. Then Greece is the the high strength ballot. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, th we also saw the semi-final results. Um, we don't have to talk about that for very long. Sometimes you have a year where you see there's only a gap of one or two points or sometimes even zero points um, um, between the number 10th and, and 11th. This year, I think overall, those 10 qualifiers, those 20 qualifiers were pretty clear because there was, a especially for semi-final, a pretty big gap between number 10 and 11, right? I think in both cases it was at least more than one country. So even if the number 11 would have received 12 points from one extra country voting in that semi-final... That still wouldn't have been enough. No. Wouldn't have been enough. And I think that for a semi-final is quite a big gap. So we can say that all 20 qualifiers, including Romania, which was one that I uh, didn't see coming at all, uh, but we can say now that all of them were uh, deserved finalists, which is probably why we had such a high level or at least uh, in 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 depth of it uh, such a high level final field where not really uh, anyone outside of france maybe uh, was was really f fell below uh, the threshold okay that's it um for us looking back at uh, eurovision 2022 from turin uh, it was great great experience to uh, to be here once again to follow the eurovision song contest we don't know what the next year is going to uh, look like but uh, we will of course Keep on loving, watching, and enjoying Eurovision. Okay. See, Slava Ukraina, we say now. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you're going to start learning that language now. Uh, Privet. <laughs>